So when last we were together, <laughs> we were talking about beauty in the service of science. And now we're going to talk about ugliness in the service of imagination. And it doesn't get any uglier than war with a blood-spattered book to start. This is a book of, of, of field surgery from 1530, hence the blood on the cover. And here you're going to see that the mind of war pushes our imagination in whole new ways, anatomically. It creates destruction on an unbelievable scale when we talk about atomic weapons, and it creates an amazing desire for machines in Leonardo da Vinci. But war also drives healing, because for the first time, we're dissecting human bodies using weaponry. And so when you finally run, have your own war, you don't have to care about the rules, and you end up with something that looks like this to begin. Now, this is contemporaneous with the Vesalius, and you can see it's very crude. It's a few years earlier. And we start to see, literally here, and let's go to this, we'll come back to this, the first ever depiction of an amputation in a book, All right. literally. All right, this is in the 1520s. We then go from here, and people start to try to figure out how do we put the body back together? And so you can see the crudeness in the 1520s and the 1530s in trying to understand what's going on. How do we repair the body? And yet the imagination is stuck here because there's no dissection, no details, no knowledge of the human body. And so we're stuck with things like this. And we start to create machines to repair the body. Now, these look pretty sad, okay, they are. But this is the beginning of using machines for healing. Prior to this point, Hippocrates had invention, invented a table, and we're gonna see it, all right, but there was no use of machines, really, for healing. And finally, we look at this last piece here, and the ghost off here, and we see trepanning. This dates back to Neolithic times, where doctors drilled holes in the head to release the pressure on the brain. This process, for those of you that are doctors in the room, still occurs today. So we go from here in the same period of time to a look at Guido here, and we see Hippocrates' table. Hippocrates creates these ideas of using pulleys and levers early on to try to reset the bones of the body. And you can see just how tough this machine looks, and it needs to be tough because your body's tough. How tough? Well, take a look here. This is how tough. This is a table where they are literally trying to put this person back together. And of course, warfare has a need to put people back together and fast. In fact, the Romans invent military medicine literally to put people back together. We go from here to stretching your arm out for pulling it here. And of course, if that's not good enough, let's see if I can find it here quickly. We go upside down. Oh, let's see if I can find it quickly here. Oh, no, I can't find it. All right, well, we'll move on. But they hang you upside down, literally. There we go, I couldn't miss it. Because they need the weight of the human body to try to put you back together. When the inquisitors saw this, they said, you know these machines for healing? We have a much better idea. <laughs> and the Inquisition took the healing tables from these books to create the maximum pain in the human body using the same concepts backwards. So when we go from there and we take healing, it suddenly becomes apparent in military that you can create a book of healing. Somebody comes up with the idea of creating the first illustrated surgical book that's hand-painted so every page could teach healing. This is a Pan Coast book. This is the Civil War manual for battlefield repair. And throughout this book, again, they brought the beauty back because now we're in the 1850s and 1860s. They have artists painting this, each individual copy of Pan Coast, in an effort to reveal how to operate. So we've seen this face before. Now we see it again. Only this time, for the first time, we're using the beauty to teach surgery. 
So now we're in the 1850s. And here's what happens in military medicine. The ugliest of all forms leads back to beauty. Why? Because once you were injured on the battlefield and you were disfigured on the battlefield, man or woman, you started to work on the notion of reconstructing the whole being. It's military surgery that leads to plastic surgery, that leads to cosmetic surgery, that leads to the idea of restoring how you look to be a whole person, not just resetting the bones. And so Pancoast pioneers among military issues, he also pioneers the whole notion of cosmetic surgery, which brings us to the first cosmetic tool ever used in a field hospital, and it's in this box. You see, the Civil War was the last great war fought with anesthesia, without anesthesia, but it was also the last great war where the amount of military destruction was so great there was no capacity to keep up with it. So when you lost your eye in the battlefield and they, wound, they wheeled you into a surgical, this is what they would have. This is a box of glass eyes. And the doctor, after you had lost your eye, would literally look at one eye, match it from this box, and put a glass eye in as a way to start to give you back some dignity as opposed to just wearing a patch. And so you see from beauty to the ugliness of war an attempt to get back to beauty, all to drive the human imagination forward. Thank you.